Welcome to Adulting Week Day 4, Technology. This is pretty much the reason that I'm doing this whole series. I have made so many changes and improvements to my technological life over the last year that I really have to share things with you. So to begin, Evernote is maybe the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. They call themselves a digital filing cabinet and I can agree more. You can store anything there, any kind of file, photos, uh, you know, text files, emails, web pages. They actually have a web clipper where you can just take like a full, you know, screenshot, screen capture of the website so that when you want go to, you know, type in bread recipe or something, it's not that you're just searching through bookmarks, you're searching through the full text of the websites. So at any given time, offline, if you're on a plane, you know, if you're wherever, uh, you have everything kind of searchable all at once. So it really is like your whole digital life, if you choose to use it that way, is searchable in one, you know, setting which is so huge. So I have various notebooks, like one for recipes, one for articles, one for writing that's in progress, uh, one for travel, but then you can use tags to really specify those things. So to say, you know, article versus interview versus essay. I think it's a good idea to just take a couple hours one day and plan out how you want to use it. Again, there are lots of articles online where people detail like their intense usages of the Evernote systems uh, and just decide like, how am I gonna organize this? Otherwise it could be a little overwhelming if you sort of import a bunch of stuff and then decide how you're gonna organize it. I chose to pay the $8 a month premium plan for my first month, that way I could import an unlimited number of files, uh, but the standard plan is totally fine, it just puts a cap on how much you can import to the service every month in terms of file size. And the other half of solving my like on-the-go various devices problem has been Pocket. Pocket's been around forever, I don't know why I didn't know about it until a year and change ago, um, but it's just a way to save articles in one place that you're going to read later. Before Pocket, if I saw a link that I wanted to read on Twitter, I would either favorite the tweet and then never come back to it, or secondly, I would, you know, click the URL, click the bottom menu, click copy, go to a text message to myself or an email to myself, paste the link, send it, go back to Twitter. Too labor intensive, no. Now I can just long press on the link and click save to pocket and there it is. I can read it on my work computer, I can read it on my phone, I can download a bunch of them to my computer automatically and read them on a plane. It's so amazing to have all of the things that I want to read all in one place. It integrates with pretty much any application you're gonna to wanna to use, Twitter, iMessage, email, except for Facebook. However, there is a workaround using the next service that I'm gonna recommend, if this then that. It's a way to automate tasks between applications, that way you can save yourself clicks and time. There are different recipes you can use to trigger actions between these platforms, so for example, if I share a link on Facebook to only myself, it'll put that URL into Pocket. That's my workaround. If I save an item for later on Reddit, it'll send it to Pocket. If I add a video to Pocket, it'll put it in my YouTube Watch Later queue. My favorite recipe, though, is one that will save the Spotify Discover Weekly playlist to another playlist called Discover Weekly Archive. So every single week, those perfect songs that Spotify magically knows I'm going to love are not lost to the ether, but saved into a playlist that I can shuffle and clean to. The cross-platform possibilities are endless, especially if you use Android. Speaking of which, I really like Spotify. Again, I was sort of hesitant to embrace it. I hated how it like auto-shared your things, um, but Again, for someone who's on the go, if I hear cool new music and I just want to add it to my playlists on all my devices at any time, really it's worth paying $5 or $10 a month for Spotify because it is so easy and so convenient. I love using Dispatch for email on my iPhone, especially if you have multiple accounts. It's really, really good for managing like your filters and your tags um, and drafting emails to people. And you can archive or delete or forward messages right from the inbox view. So you can kind of just action all of those items, sorry, uh, with Without having to go into each and every email. I really like dark sky for weather. It's really pretty and it focuses on precipitation, which is all I care about when I'm, you know, getting dressed, do I need an umbrella or not in the morning. I love pocket casts, especially if you want to have kind of specialized settings for each show. Are you going to delete episodes once they're played? Are you going to auto download them? Do you want a notification when it comes in? I love them. I love the team. They're really good with like customer service and interaction on Twitter. The app productivity is one that I use for daily reminders, like watering my plants or calling my family or or, you know, brushing and flossing at night. Clue is the best period tracker out there. Infinite Storm has really good white noise, like rain noise for writing or sleeping or working. And if you aren't using Flux to dim your laptop monitor when it gets dark outside, you should be. Please share your favorite apps and technology tricks and I'll be back at you tomorrow with another episode of Adulting Week.